Today we're going to be looking at advanced screen space shaders in Godot. So we're going to be passing in where items are on a canvas as a parameter to your shader. This will let you highlight specific areas, for example, with a crosshair or showing areas in focus and having everything else have a Gaussian blur applied to it. Or alternatively, having a screen wipe that is centered on a specific point in your screen. This covers some fundamentals to do with how UVs are handled and will be very helpful in your shader life going forwards. I am Bram, and today I will be your Godot guide. Some fundamental knowledge that's required is how UVs work. A shader stores where it currently is in a vector 2, which is a UV. This has an X and a Y coordinate, and both of these vary from 0 to 1, where 0 is the minimum and 1 is the maximum. So if we display that as a gradient, so white is where UV.X is full at 1, and black is where UV.X is at its minimum at 0, you can see we get a gradient going from left to right. We can do the same using UV.Y being displayed as white and black, and you can see we've got black at the top and white at the bottom. This is very important because it means if we want to compare UV space to where an object is, we need to first of all convert an object's location into where it is on our screen, and then after that, divide that by the width of the screen and the height of the screen so that it's a value between 0 and 1. The simplest example of displaying a position on a screen space shader is going to be using the mouse as our source, because that's already in the correct format to show where it is on our screen and just on our screen, as opposed to being a global position. So let's create a scene, I'll call it simple mouse demo, add a canvas layer and add a color rect, fill everything, and then add a shader material and add a shader to that. I cover this process in more length in my full screen textures video. So a straightforward thing to display using a position on a screen is a crosshair focused on where our position is. So let's create a canvas item shader, and we're going to want to export a few variables. They're going to be the target position, which is what we're going to pass in our mouse position to, and our intensity, which is going to control how visible our effect is so we can control it later on. I'm going to define the target initially just as a vector 2 with 0.5, that will start as the middle of the screen, but we're going to update it later on, and I'm going to provide a hint range to the intensity so that it can only be a float value between 0 and 1. We can then get cracking on our fragment shader, and I'm just going to flat block out our color as being white with the full alpha channel. If you pass just one variable into a vector 4, it will populate every field with that value. We're then going to want to draw our crosshair itself, and we're going to do that by comparing the distance from where we are to the middle of the screen, and we're going to use that as a divisor for the entirety of the screen pixel size on the x-axis when we're checking our distance on the x-axis. This is going to get us a value that saturates at around one pixel away from the middle of the screen and then eases out, so it's a bit of a smoother effect, and we can do the same thing on the y-axis. So this boils down to taking screen pixel size dot x or y dividing it by the distance from where we currently are, which is uv, and to target.x and uv.y. So that only checks the distance in the x-axis because the uv.y is the same as the uv.y in the other part of the distance function. And that's the same vice versa for the y version of this. We can then clip out what we don't want to see. So we're going to set the alpha channel of our color, which is already white, to be x plus y multiplied by our intensity. So it's going to be one-ish everywhere that's a pixel away from the middle of our screen on the x-axis and the middle of the screen on the y-axis. We can then mosey our way on over to a script that we will add to our root node, and what this is going to do is it's going to get our mouse position relative to the viewport using get viewport and get mouse position. This will return the mouse's position on the screen, which is very easy to convert into the same format as a UV, because all we need to do is divide the x values, which currently ranges between 0 and 1920, by the width of the screen, which is 1920. We're then going to want to update our shader parameter with where our mouse currently is by just passing in the target as t. Let's run that and see how it looks. Sweet. Because we checked the distance, it has a minor glow effect to it, which is quite nice. As you can see, it follows the mouse around, and the mouse already has some tracking built into it, so if you move it off the screen, the position will remain where it is, and it won't start to do weird things because our target's off screen. So that's our base case. We now want to try and figure out how passing in a global position to this shader works. Before we continue, let's just save that material for use later on. 
For your convenience, I've already created a very simple scene that we'll be applying these effects to. This is because screen space shaders are much easier to see when there's a background because I'm going to be doing stuff like blurring. So the background I've created is Renny Magritte's Empire of Light as drawn by someone who doesn't have very much time. I've created a simple player controller, which is the Godot icon, and it has a five line movement system that just means when I move the arrow keys, it'll move left, right, up and down. Additionally, I added a small shader to the background clouds to make them bob up and down just to give a little bit of life to the scene. So let's dive into what we're actually doing now. As with the mouse scene, we're going to want a canvas layer, a color rect, make it fill everything. I'm going to rename the color rect so it's crosshair, and I'm going to drag the material from the last crosshair scene in. We're then also going to want a tween, and this is what we're going to use to animate our shader turning on and off. We're going to want to get our player icon. We're going to do this so we can pass its global position into our shader later on. I'm then going to set a variable called toggle, which will say whether or not our effect is on, and then going to export a path, which is going to be a node path. This is important because we're going to have a few shaders, and we're going to want to be able to select which one we're actively using when we run the scene. I'm then also going to call a variable nod, which is going to store the node obtained from the node path. So now we can focus on our process function. Node 2Ds, like our sprite, have, in addition to having a global position and a local position, they also have a function built in, which is get global transform with canvas. This, like getting the mouse's position on the canvas, gets where that position is on our canvas, but it's then saved in a variable that object returns called origin. So if we get that, we get our position on the screen, just like with the mouse. However, we don't guarantee here that our object is on the screen. So in order to make our shaders make sense, I'm going to clamp our value so that the minimum is zero and the maximum is the screen width. That means if our object is off the screen and to the left, it will just display the leftmost possible point on our screen. Once we've clamped it, we can then divide the value by our X size of our viewport and our Y size of our viewport. And just like with the mouse position, we will have values that range from zero to one in exactly the same way as our UV does. We can then pass that into the shader param as before, and let's have a look at how this one works. Nice, that's all working. Next, let's try a Gaussian blur that focuses on one point. Let's add another color rect, make it full rect, call it blur, make the other one invisible, and let's set our root node to have the blur's path set as the main node of our scene instead of the crosshair. So a Gaussian Blur is very, very straightforward to implement in Godot thanks to the texture lot function, which actually just applies a Gaussian Blur in a very lightweight fashion, so thanks developers. All we need to do is set our value to be texture lot of our screen texture and screen UV, and then change a parameter for how blurred we will be. I've found suitable values for this to be varying between 0 and 6, so I'm going to multiply our intensity by six, and I'm going to then multiply that by the distance from where our sprite is. So that means where our sprite is is going to have a very small number, so it's going to be a very clean image, and then the further we get away, the more the Gaussian blur is going to be applied to our screen. We're going to divide the distance by the square root of two, and the reason we're going to do that is because it normalizes things, as I will explain now. So because we're dealing with a position on the screen, our maximum distance isn't quite one. So I'm going to show you a graph here, where on the left we are increasing our uv.y from zero to one, and on the bottom we're increasing our uv.x from zero in the bottom left to one in the bottom right. And let's assume we can have our player icon be at any position in here. Well, the two furthest points will always be opposite corners on the diagonal. And we have a very friendly friend in mathematics called Pythagoras, who has a good way of defining the length of a triangle's hypotenuse. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we can do is we can square our bottom and right values, which at their maximum are 1. We can add them together and we can square root it. What we get in there, 1 squared is very easy to do. We get 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. So therefore, the two furthest points away from each other are the square root of 2 apart. So when we divide our value by the square root of 2, it normalizes. And now, if I apply this effect, you might just about be able to make out that the edges are blurred. If I go down to the bottom left, as the top right's the furthest point, you can see it gets very blurred. And if I turn it on and off, you can see a very stark difference between how in focus that area is. So this works about as I expected. Quite nice, all in all. 
and onto our last effect, which is going to be a circular screen wipe. We're going to add a color rect in exactly the same way as the crosshair and the blur, and we're going to set it to be the main node of our scene, call it wipe, make the other two layers invisible, and we're off to the races. I have to thank Discord user at Garmelion for helping me with this one, because my brain wasn't good enough to figure out how to make circles rather than ellipses. We're going to copy over our base shader as before, and we're going to add an extra variable that we can call color, and this is going to be the color of our wipe circle. Making an ellipsis in a shader is rather straightforward, because all you really need to do is compare your distance of where you currently are to where you're looking at, and then hollow that out in the alpha channel. But making your circle have consistent dimensions is fiddly, because the screen pixel size of your shape isn't constant. And what I mean by that is it's wider than it is tall, so that means that moving along the x-axis will have more ground you've covered than moving across the y-axis. In order to accommodate this, we're going to need to figure out the resolution of our shape. You could do that by passing your scales in, but you can do it within the shader. What you can do is you can take a value we'll call resolution, set it to be 1f, divided by our screen pixel size. So what we can do then is we can multiply our screen UV by this resolution, and it will get us our current pixel in appropriate dimensions to how far it is along the screen and down the screen so it will actually be a rectangle rather than a square. We can then find our target pixel in the same way, but we're going to need to do a bit of processing on our target because we're going to want to invert our y value, so it goes from one, 1 to 0 rather than 0 to 1. We can then take the distance between these two pixels, and we can compare that to a radius later on to find out whether or not we should draw, and when we do draw, it'll be a circle. So then we're going to want to calculate what the radius of our shape should be, and we're going to do that by multiplying our intensity by the length of our resolution. And length will do a Pythagorean function on this vector too. It will grab that hypotenuse for us. So it's figured out the maximum length our screen can be. Then we can set our colour to be colour, which is black by default. So, because this is a layer we're drawing over the top of our canvas, you'll have everything covered by black. And then if we want to make the wipe happen, what we can do is we can hollow out the area we want to be a transparent hole by setting the alpha channel in the area of a circle around the point we're looking at by taking one, adding our distance, and subtracting the radius. That will then set an area which is set to be no greater than what our radius is, and it will hollow it out. And there we have it. We can move around, we can activate or deactivate our screen wipe. If we're off the screen, it will still set it to a valid point that's on the screen, and we have everything we want. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that jazz for more content from me in the future. Cheers.